Hello, 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 and welcome back to my channel. We are now switching gears into a little bit of a spooky theme today. I'm really excited to show you guys how this one turned out, how I created it. Of course, everything I use in today's tutorial will be listed and linked down in the description box, as well as any discount codes that I have for you. So let's go ahead and get started. So first things first, let's get our cup prepped. So I am using a 16 ounce plump today from the Steel Magnolia Company. Of course, I'm going to prep that with a sanding block and then wipe that down with some 91% rubbing alcohol. Once I've dried my cup and it is nicely prepped, I'm going to take it outside and I will spray paint it with a flat white spray paint, one nice coat. And then over top of that, I'm going to go over that with a Krylon fluorescent green neon paint. The Krylon brand is typically the ones that I gravitate towards and use when it it comes to neons I know there's a lot of other spray paints that carry the neon colors Krylon works really well for me so I haven't really found any reason to need to pick up a different color but certainly if you have an another neon paint that you want to use you're more than welcome to grab that now we're going to go ahead and with my cup now dry, I'm now going to go ahead and apply my glitter. So we're going to use Mod Podge as the adhesive today. You're more than welcome to also use epoxy method if that is your preferred method. Normally it's mine, but I have been gravitating towards using Mod Podge, usually because when I'm prepping for tutorials for YouTube, uh, it's the only cup I'm working on. So I don't have a lot of time to really mix up epoxy. Um, if you guys know me, I'm usually jumping from one tutorial to the next, uh, and I usually don't have a whole lot of time to kind of really play plan things out sometimes. <laughs> so my poor planning on that on that end. So I'm going to go ahead and give this a nice thin coat of Mod Podge here and we are going to use the color Parakeet from My Aisha Creations. This was in her last Glynol subscription subscription box that I received from her for the month of July, I believe. And so we're gonna just make sure that we have a nice even coat of this fine green glitter. It is such a pretty neon color. I really don't always go towards neon colors, but the bundle that she put together for this lax subscription box was absolutely amazing and I have used every single color and loved each and every one. So we're going to let that dry and then of course we're going to do two coats of epoxy over top of that glitter. Once that glitter has dried about 20 mLs of epoxy over the cup with my KS resin liquidy split before we go into any sanding. So you guys know the drill here it's sanding the most dreaded part of the process for me but we of course have to do so in order to make sure that the integrity of our cup stays. So I'm going to start with that top rim with a 60 grit sanding block and just ensure that I am knocking off any sort of sharp bits or any glitter that may be poking up, as well as creating that fine line of stainless steel that's going to help our final coats of epoxy adhere. Since this is also kind of like a peekaboo, but not if that makes sense, because I'm going to be putting spray paint over top of this, I do want to go down a little bit farther on my top rim to ensure that my paint adheres to the top rim. Um, that way, when I'm doing the distressing of this tumbler, I don't have any issues with the glitter showing in places I don't want it to. So after I've gotten my cup nice and sanded, we'll clean that off with some 91% rubbing alcohol. And now I'm going to take this back outside and I'm going to spray paint this with a flat matte or matte black spray paint. So we're going to be creating some super cute white and black stripes. So now that I am back from spray painting, I have a beautifully even coat of that matte spray paint that I used. And now I'm going to grab some painter's tape and we are going to create the strips on this cup. So I decided to base paint it black. You could do the opposite and base paint it white and then do black stripes over top. There really isn't a reasoning for me doing black. I think in my head I was... I knew that I'd have a better chance of the matte black staying on my cup with my painter's tape versus doing a flat white spray paint. I thought that maybe I would have a little bit of an issue with the tape pulling my paint up if I use the white spray paint versus going with black. But I think in hindsight, as long as you did some really even coats of your spray paint, you probably would be fine either way. You also could sort of remove some of the sticky off the back of your painter tape by just rubbing it along your clothing or around your tabletop to remove a little bit of that sticky which probably would also help ensure that your painter tape comes up without taking the paint with it. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking my one inch painter tape and I am putting strips in straight lines right down the cup. So I am using a little piece of tape to kind of be my spacer to make sure that my strips are evenly spaced apart. Okay. And I think in total, I think I got 
eight stripes around so eight stripes of white and black uh, total around this 16 ounce plump obviously if you were using a larger cup or maybe a different style or shape cup you may want to measure your cup first and kind of determine how thick your ships need to be in order to get an even amount of them I just got lucky when it came to this that I was able to get an even amount of stripes all the way around without having one section be larger than another on any part of the cup so I'm just going to finish short of taping off this cup here and you will also see me go around with my craft knife once I've gotten all of the painter stripes sort of placed and cut off the excess at the bottom section so I wanted to keep the bottom part the very bottom of the cup white um to, I don't I just kind of just decided to go go with white you could keep it black if you wanted but I didn't want to have to worry about taping off the bottom so I just figured that since I was going over top with these stripes with a flat white spray paint that I also would paint the bottom white as well um just to kind of keep it consistent and so that I don't have to worry about um, you know, having to tape off that bottom section, as I mentioned. So I'm just going to finish sort of taping off or cutting off rather the excess here. So I have a nice straight line where all my black stripes will be under this painter's tape here before I take this outside to again do two coats of my flat white spray paint. So remember because you're going over a darker color versus taking a darker color and putting it over a lighter color you will need more than one coat of your white spray paint over top to ensure you get a nice bright white color and don't have any of that black spray paint showing underneath your first coat of spray paint. So I'm going to take this outside, like I mentioned, two coats, let this dry, and then we'll get into removing the painter stripes. Okay, so it's been about 20 minutes or so, and my paint is now officially dry. Again, I did two coats of the flat white spray paint, but now it's time to remove my painter's tape here to expose those black stripes underneath. So I'm just going to take my weeding tool here um, and just remove those stripes. They really came off really easily. I didn't have any issues. I didn't have any of the paint removed when I was removing the tape, which is a plus because I didn't have to worry about doing any touch-ups as well. And I think as long as you do a couple coats of your paint for each layer of spray paint that you're going to be doing, you probably won't run into an issue with your paint your painter's tape removing any of the paint underneath as long as you do more than one coat of spray paint for each layer of spray paint you're going to be adding for your stripe colors. So I'm just going to continue to remove the rest of these and then what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing a little bit of distressing. So obviously we have that gorgeous green parakeet glitter underneath this so we are going to do a little bit of distressing to really give this a super cute and spooky look. Okay, so now I'm going to walk you through distressing, okay? So distressing is done using both acetone and alcohol. So the blue lid here is my acetone and the purple lid is my 91% rubbing alcohol, okay? So acetone is going to remove your paint really easily. It's going to really get that paint removed super quick, super easy, no issues. Your 91% alcohol is what you're going to use to clean up those edges. So once you're using acetone on top of your cup, you'll notice that you get a lot of fogginess from the paint and obviously that's not the look you're going for right you want to make sure that those distressed areas look really clean so you can see that beautiful glitter underneath so using that alcohol interchanging with the acetone you're going to be able to see that it starts to clear up almost right away I also would encourage you to use an old rag when you're distressing versus trying to use something like coffee filters or paper towels I never have very good luck when it comes to using paper towels and coffee filters when I'm doing or going for a distressed look. It tends to kind of rip on me, leave behind a lot of debris and things, which is just not what you want when you're trying to give your tumbler that distressed sort of look. So just kind of, you know, take your time with this. I encourage you to practice this. It's a really, really fun and easy way to kind of do different designs on your cups and it can be done over glitter um, it can be done in combination with glitter I've seen beautiful distress designs that have glitter underneath and then also glitter on top with a little bit of distressing in between it really is a beautiful look and you can get a lot of really cool and interesting designs looks when you are doing sort of this distressing technique so I'm just kind of going around and choosing different sections that I want to distress on here there's no rhyme or reason to what I am going for. I'm sure that you've been able to tell by now, though, this tumbler is very much inspired by the movie Beetlejuice, and you'll see that even more as I begin to add the decal on here as well. 
I just really have been gravitating most recently to spooky themed cups. So I've been in the process of sort of creating a lot of different designs inspired by my favorite Halloween and spooky movies. So I'm really excited to be able to bring a few of those as tutorials to my YouTube channel. So definitely stay tuned because I will definitely have a few more of these sort of movie inspired uh, Tumblr designs to basically show you my spin on how I could create sort of the movie inspiration into a Tumblr without obviously doing anything that's going to be some sort of copyright infringement, okay? Everything is kind of my own creation, if you will. So I will also mention to you when we're going back to distressing here is that distressing over the white paint was harder to do than over the black paint. The black paint removed really easily, really well. The white paint was a little bit harder and that's because really there's three coats of paint there, right? So there's the black layer of paint, then the two coats of white. So it did take a little bit more elbow grease, if you will, to be able to get that that paint to be removed. But what I love about those white sections is because that black layer is underneath, you're also getting like this edge of the black paint showing underneath. And it just gives this really beautiful, like vintagey, old, almost like burned edge paper look that I just absolutely love. So I'm going to continue a little bit of distressing here and then cleaning up everything with my 91% rubbing alcohol and rag to really make sure I don't have any of that black paint or any spray paint smudged anywhere that I don't want it to be, making sure everything looks nice and clean and that the green glitter is really bright and shining through without any cloudiness over top of that epoxied area. So my distressing is all finished and we're going to put it back on the turner for another coat of 20 mLs of epoxy. So I put another layer of epoxy over top of the paint and I did also add a little bit of Diamond Magic from my Asia Creations which just is like a fine glitter mica additive that you can add to any of your epoxy to just give a little bit of sparkle and shine to both the black and white stripes. So now that we've taken that off the turner, I am going to sand a little bit again. It has been sitting for more than 24 hours on my turner, so I want to make sure that the next coats of epoxy do have something to adhere to, a scuffed up surface. And then we're going to get this prepped and ready to apply my decal. So this decal I created myself in Procreate. I will show that sort of uh, time lapse here of how I created that in Procreate here. This also will be available on my Etsy shop, um, which will soon be turned into a location for all of the digital files that I will be selling. So that will be available soon. But I created this in Procreate, as I mentioned. I then had it printed on a piece of printable vinyl, which I will link the printable vinyl that I love to use down in the description box. And then I did seal. I do like to seal my printable vinyl, even though this is a glossy printable vinyl and I never have issue with glossy. I did seal this with just one coat of a clear rosoleum spray paint. I just want to make sure that when I'm rubbing it on, in case my fingers are a little bit like slippery or sweaty, that I don't smudge any of the ink. So sometimes I will go over that with a, you know, just one nice coat of a clear gloss spray to make sure that I don't have any issues when applying. So I go ahead and put that on there and then I decided I needed a little bit more. So I went back to Cricut and I found a coffin shape and decided to cut out a few coffins on just black vinyl. And so we're going to add these to the cup in a lot of the white sections here. So what I would uh, mention is that you want to make these a little bit small. Obviously, you don't want them to be too big. I wanted them to fit in that one inch section. In some sections you'll see or pieces you'll see that I do put it over the black section. And you really can see that. I know it's hard to see it here, but because the base is glittered underneath this, you can tell the difference between where the coffin ends and where that glitter black stripe starts, if that makes sense. So, which I obviously didn't want any of my coffins to kind of blend into those black stripes there. I wanted them to kind of be standalone. So, this is the final look. Of course, this cup went back on the turner for final coats of epoxy. Two final coats of using my KS Resin Liquidy Split. And this is the beautiful and gorgeous results. I absolutely love how this came out. And I cannot wait to show you the other designs I've been working on. Of course, if you guys love today's tutorial, definitely make sure to give this video a huge thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you guys again soon. Bye!